Hey Jody here, I'm doing some TIG welding today and I'm welding up a cool little project. It's called a Tube Hurricane Challenge on Instagram. You know, you've seen, if you're on Instagram, you, you've probably noticed challenges go around every now and then. It's just all in good fun. Razor Blade Challenge, Cube Challenge. This is called the Tube Hurricane Challenge. And this one that I've got is, is a bunch of Coke tubes all boxed in by rectangular tubes and it's, it's all tab and slot cut so it's not welded yet but it's all locked together really good fit ups too and it's clean and all ready to weld a company called precision tube laser precision tube laser .com. they do cnc laser cutting for other businesses they asked if they could send me this for a video and i said absolutely because it's a lot of work but they're going to send it ready to weld gives us a whole lot to talk about i hope i don't screw this up it should be a lot of fun. I know I'll learn something. Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this. Let's do it. Doesn't this look like it would be fun to weld? Now I don't have to have any gaps in this thing. If I, if I were to take enough care, clamp everything down, bump it around, maybe put a ratchet strap around it and suck everything up tight, there would be no gaps. But I'm not going to take that much care. If I have a tiny gap here and there, I really don't care. It's nice clean metal. It came to me all shrink wrapped and it actually has started to get a speck or two of rust on it and so I need to just weld it up. I don't want to have to take it all apart, wipe it down, clean it or anything like that. It's just really not worth it for the sake of just doing a demo video. It mics out around 55 thousandths on both the round and the rectangular and a good rule of thumb for carbon steel is one amp per one thousandths of thickness. That's a good good starting point. I'm going to set the machine a little bit higher than that, a little over 100, just to see what it needs. But I'm going to also put a camera on the readout, and we'll see exactly what it takes to weld this joint here. I'm using a number 12 clear ferret cup with about 25 CFH of argon. And the main reason is it's just for filming. I know I say this all the time, but you, know, you could do this, this job pretty easily with a number eight gas lens, something like that. But this gets, this allows me to stick the electrode out far enough that the cup is not blocking the view. There you can see the readout on amperage. It's pretty close, 59 to 60 amps. That's pretty close to one amp per 1,000. That's a good starting point for carbon steel. For stainless, you'll need a, bit, a little bit less than that. And if you're doing aluminum, you typically need a little bit more than one amp per thousands. It all depends on how much chill factor there is, how much mass there is drawing the heat away, or if you've got chill blocks or something like that. So we'll do a few of these joints like this. This one doesn't seem to have any gap in it at all. And so I'm using 045 ER70S2 wire right here. I could use probably 1 16th but 045 is a really good choice for this particular thickness. It's a good rod to have on hand too. It's, it's one that you typically don't find in welding supply stores. They usually will go down to maybe a sixteenth, as small as they have. But order some off Amazon. It'll pay off to have a pound or two of 045 ER70S2 or ER70S6. Both of them are just pretty much interchangeable. The size is the main thing for this, for this job. Again, I'm, I'm around 55 to 60 amps here. We'll get an arc shot here in just a second. And there will also be one coming up here with a gap, with a little bit of a gap in it. I didn't get any gaps that were too hard to deal with, but I did get some that were maybe, you know, 040 or so in thickness. Uh, so I'll talk about that in just a second. I'm trying to weld up all these outside things first and get everything locked into place before I tackle the inside where all those cope tubes are. Now this one's got a little bit gap in it and when, when you're welding thin stuff that's got a gap you want to get the rod in there often. You don't want to travel very far without dipping the rod in there again. Like if you don't have a gap you can probably move the torch ahead almost an eighth of an inch in between dabs but when you have a gap if you try to do that it'll just peel, peel out keyhole you'll blow a hole most of the time so just kind of keep that rod in there really often and it makes things go a lot better when you have a gap. A couple other things to notice. Notice I'm not coming very far out of that puddle, so I'm keeping that hot tip of the rod shielded with argon. And, and I'm trying to also penetrate fully on these butt joints. Now, for fillet welds like this, you don't really want to or need to penetrate all the way through the back side. You do need to penetrate into the root of the joint, 
but if you do penetrate through all the way it's not the end of the world it's just that what happens is you'll be drawing oxides in from the backside and they will enter the puddle and they'll make it swim around and and they'll make it a little bit sluggish so you don't want to do that it's very really, you know, on certain thicknesses it's very hard not to penetrate through completely even though you try not to but here I'm trying not to I'm, I'm pushing enough rod in there I'm able to look through the cup right here which is another benefit of that clear number 12 I'd probably be using a ceramic number 12 on this job actually if it wasn't for just needing to film it and have it having it light the way but this one I backed off on the heat just a little bit more than I did on the previous one and so it's going a little bit better and I'm not not sucking those oxides in from the backside. Learn, you know, by the time I get to the end of the last weld on this, I'll probably have it down pat. <laughs> That's the way it always works for me. Let's look at one more. Maybe we'll get some different angles on this, a little bit different perspective. For the most part, I don't think I'm penetrating all the way through, but right there it looks like it flared out. The puddle got a little bit hot, wandered on one side, and those, those ripples are getting kind of V-shaped. That's an indicator. That's an indicator that you're a little bit too hot on a fillet weld on TIG. All I could like that, and then I propped it up upright here to kind of connect the dots. And now I'm going to weld the inside. And the first thing I'm going to do is get a nice little a nice little inch or so welded on each one of those throats on that tight tight angle and just wadding up the aluminum foil like this will let you kind of mold it in those corners and basically basically it, it's providing a dam uh, to trap the argon so that the argon doesn't create some type of a vortex and suck air and get sparks and porosity and all that kind of stuff I'm extending the electrode out a good seven eighths of an inch or so here and that's not a problem with this number 12 cup but it can be a problem if you're welding over something that splits the argon flow and lets it kind of create a vortex so I'm gonna get a nice clean little tack on each one of the on each one of these little tight angles here using the the wad of aluminum foil and I'll have to make several different wads as it gets misshaped and whatnot but that really does it doesn't have to seal perfectly it just has to provide a little bit of a resistance to kind of trap argon in there and it gets me a nice little launching pad for each one of these wells a nice clean shiny oxide free tack to get a nice good launching pad to start each weld on okay for this weld I'm going to be using a 1 16th diameter ER 70s6 filler metal you could say that the ER 70s6 is pretty much interchangeable with the S2 unless a, a welding procedure in a welding code specifies one or the other then you have to use that one but when you're when you're choosing yourself they're pretty much interchangeable what I have found is when you're when you're apt to penetrate all the way through or you want to penetrate all the way through the backside then the ER 70s6 tends to flow a little bit better so here this is sort of a fillet weld so I'm not really not really penetrating much all the way through so either one would work fine but this is working pretty well All right, for the other side of this whole thing, I'm going to be using an ER309L just for kicks, just because it looks it looks cool. It'll have all kinds of pretty colors on it and everything. But I like the ER70S6. I like the way it flows on a joint like this. Now, recently I did a video welding a little cluster joint of 4130 chromoly, and I'm going to show a little clip of it here because it just reminded me of this. 4130 and, and carbon steel weld very much alike. I think 4130 actually wells a little bit better. Uh, you typically would use ER70S2 or ER70S6 or even ER80SD2 for chromoly like this. But let me just show this just because I think it's a cool little shot. And I did this a few weeks ago. Might as well include it here too because I think it's kind of applicable. Here I'm using the number 12 ceramic furic cup. And it's providing really nice shielding. And shielding goes a long way on something like this. Having that really good shielding just takes it up a notch, makes it flow a little bit better. Sometimes actually requires an amp or two less to flow the metal because it is not sluggish from having oxides in the puddle. 
All right, we're getting back on the steel here, the, the hurricane challenge. And I'm using a 309 rod for this weld here just to kind of show the difference in final appearance. This will have a lot more, uh, a lot more rainbow colors in it. Now you'll see this from time to time on, on trophy trucks and things like that where the weld is maybe a two-pass weld where the first pass is done with the ER-70 rod or an ER-80 SD2 rod and then the second pass is done and it will be done either using 309 or 312 rod just for the look just strictly for the look of a high-end trophy truck. This is a single pass weld. This is just regular cold rolled steel. No real reason to use 309 on it. 309 is, is more expensive than ER-70 rod. There's no need to use it for regular cold rolled steel. I just did it here for the look. Once again, looking through the back side just to show you what can be done if you get up in a jam and you can only see the puddle through the cup. Little side view here. Again, not coming out of the puddle very far at all with the tip of that rod. You want to keep the hot melted tip of that rod always shielded with argon whenever possible. It's not so critical with aluminum because aluminum just cools so quickly but with steel and stainless steel it can really get oxides on there if you come way out of the argon and back in and it'll it will uh, really make the puddle swim around it'll make it sluggish so if you can keep it clean keep it free from oxides you got a lot better shot at making the puddle flow nice at low amperage I've got about half or three quarter inch to weld here kind of downhill so I'm going to violate every textbook rule as far as rod angle and, and things like that go. I'm just going to go downhill and I'm going to feed the wire in from the side and sometimes you just have to do that kind of thing you know jobs are all different there's all kind of constraints and what a textbook recommends as far as where you feed the wire in the puddle sometimes just doesn't work Now you might be wondering on a job like this with so much welding that what happens when you completely seal it off? Is it, isn't it going to build up pressure and just blow out? And yes it would. So there's like a quarter of an inch of a tab and slot here on the inside holding this thing together and I just decided not even to weld those little areas because this is just kind of going to be a wall ornament and so it doesn't need to be completely welded out. But yes, if you were going to weld something like this completely out with this much welding on it You'd, you'd pretty much need to drill a vent hole, a weep hole, or something like that because all that heat pressure would build up and when you go to seal that last area up, uh, man, if you've ever done it before, it just really kind of ruins your day. It just blows out, especially aluminum. Aluminum seems to be really bad because then it contaminates and it's you have to kind of let it cool and then you know come back and hit it hard and, and fast and seal it up. So I just thought I'd mention that. Wrapping it up here, wrapping this side up here again, this is with the ER-70 S6 rod. Doesn't look a whole lot different going in from these arc shots than the, than the 309 stainless rod did, but uh, you know, it does flow just a little bit different. It definitely looks a little bit different on the final appearance because the, the stainless gets those peacock colors and the, the steel wire, the ER-70 wire, just sort of doesn't. Both of them, however, came out really nice and flowed really nice, basically due to this number 12 cup, having that little bit larger gas shielded area. There you see the stainless side with all those nice peacock colors. Using the number 12 cup made it a fun job. I would highly recommend it for a job like this. I've got the clear ones along with a TIG finger bundled for a little bit of savings. I kind of would recommend the ceramic though because it's a little bit tougher, a little bit less likely to break if you were to drop it on the shop floor. I've shown several videos using both. Uh, one of the more recent ones I was welding overhead to simulate kind of a, a roll cage or chassis type joint using the number 12 ceramic with a two-pass uh, two weld along with the TIG finger because where else would you prop on something like this and it worked out great. So that's about it. Please visit my store at weldmonger.com. I appreciate your support.